With me this Sunday are Paula Slier, RT Middle East Bureau Chief, and Barack Sinner. Um, he is uh, Associate Middle East Research Fellow at the Royal United Services Institute. Thank you very much, both of us, for coming. Paula, Putin looks like he's like up to his ears in the Middle Eastern mud. Is there room for more? Well, is there room for more Putin or room for more mud? It depends which way one looks at the question. <laughs> I think the Russian president, as you know, is extremely angry over what happened to the Russian jet. He is still waiting for an apology from the Turks, and he is insisting on compensation. His actions in Syria very much point to him sending out a message, not just to the Turks, but to the international community. Don't mess with the Russians. So to answer your question in terms of where he's moving forward with this, he's certainly becoming more embroiled inside Syria. The fact that he's now sent his air defense system there is causing some to be concerned that the Russians can now do even more in terms of what they want. But he is putting his, his feet in the ground there and he is pushing ahead with his agenda, certainly. Mm -hmm. Barack, has Turkey gone mad? Uh, Turkey has the ability to go mad because really... Uh, Obama hasn't set an objective, a real strategy towards Syria in terms of assembling an alliance towards a coherent and common goal. So as a result of that, it's become a a forum for proxy warfare with a panoply of players. So you will have Turkey with its agenda of really stifling the Kurds at the expense of pursuing ISIS. You will have Russia focused on both targeting ISIS but even more so targeting anti... Yes, but, you know, downing a, a Russian jet? Downing a Russian jet really doesn't... Su it doesn't suffer severe geostrategic consequences because, fine, there may be sanctions on importing basic foodstuffs and trade from Turkey, which does have a severe financial cost, but when it comes to energy, um, Russia is basically using Turkey to export natural gas through to Europe. There is no way that that will suffer. So, yes, there will be some punitive measures, but none of them have mm. geostrategic consequences. There is, however, one regional consequence, not a geostrategic consequence, and that can be that Russia has the option of funding uh, Kurds, whether it be providing Kurds with an anti-aircraft missile in Syria, providing weapons to Kurds in Iraq. Right. So that, that's my next question, Paul. Does, does Putin have any, any military options there? Well, he certainly has against, a lot of... Against Turkey, of course. He certainly has a lot of military options. On the one hand, as you know, immediately after the downing of the jet, they cancelled all military cooperation between Turkey and Russia. The, the main impact of this is really in terms of what happens in the Black Sea, because there you have the Russian Navy and the Turkish Navy operating, and it makes things a little bit tricky when the two sides actually can't coordinate with each other. I think the main implications of this really are for what the future holds for the anti-Islamic state coalition, because you have two countries that should be on the same side of the coalition. In other words, Russia and Turkey, who now are at loggerheads with each other. So the question to be asked is, what does this mean? Because it does seem to some extent as if Islamic State has come out the winner from this internal fight. Right. Although at the same time, let me say that the Russians are really intensifying their bombardment on the ground, which is, which is not good, obviously, for the Islamic State. Mm. Barak, do you see NATO jumping into this? Do you see the Americans doing anything? Because as Paul said, it looks like ISIS. It's the only one who's not suffering here. I don't see NATO jumping into the fray. Um, the very fact that ISIS is benefiting from this is nothing new. This is merely symptomatic of previous disagreements and proxy warfare in the region. You've got very, very tight airspace with French, Russian, you know, European, American, Arab um, fighters, um, jets in the air. Um, and if you don't have America not only having a coherent strategy, but coordinating um, and deconflicting operations and promoting transparency, then this is likely to occur over and over again. So um, ISIS has benefited from this massively. You also have now Russia taking the measure of advancing the narrative that Turkey has been a purchaser of ISIS oil. What a mess. 
It's a massive mess. It's a massive mess. Paul, briefly, will Putin emerge as the winner out of this? I think he is emerging as the winner. I think most people would say that Turkey was, to, in, in inverted commas, mad to shoot down a, a, a Russian plane. And most people would feel that the Turks knew it was a Russian plane. The, the Russians themselves are, themselves are saying it was pre-planned. There's even some vo voices in Russian circles that the Turks informed the Americans about it. So whatever you believe, I do think that Putin emerges from the stronger. Paul Slier and Borak Sinov, thank you very much thank you. for joining us.